your fingers weren't moving though. You just said three, two, one, and Bill's supposed to say one, two, three. Uh, you're well. Are we? Oh, we're, 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 we're going to delay that because we're going to. I'm going to let you know at 15 minutes. Oh well, great. You know the funny thing about it is, I think, I think our Bible studies are so <laughs> so interesting because it's so improv. You know. Yes, I like it. And, and y'all excuses for being a little late this morning. I, I had to fix my hair. Um, <laughs> And we were we had a really good discussion going on uh, before Connie said three two one and six eleven. So anyway, thank the Lord for. You know what today is, Bill? June the seventh of twenty twenty. You know what yesterday was? You should know what yesterday was. Yesterday was was the uh, D day. D day. D day. Thank God for what He did. Just yeah. just thank God for my and I'm uh, some of you. Probably know this. My my own dad took part in D Day. He landed on Omaha Beach uh, on D Day, and uh, he's a hero. Uh, well, he didn't ever think he was a hero, but well, he was. I, I think so. But, and thank God for those uh, men and many women that were in World War II that did that. Uh, and it's personal to me because my dad, my own dad, landed there at uh, early twenties, twenty, twenty-one years old. And and uh, I asked him one day, uh, well. It, well, into his 80, 89 or 90 years old, I asked him, the first question I asked him was, uh, what, what, did, what, what was your first sight coming off that big uh, carrier and getting on those barges and going through there? And he said, a, d uh, a division of SS troopers shooting at us. <laughs> uh, the first wave was just almost annihilated. It, it, was, yeah. it was a slaughter. Yeah, and so uh, the, the water ran red. Yeah. Yeah, so bloody Omaha, that's what they called it. Yeah, anyway. We can edit that out if you want. Yeah, well, we'll, but folks need to know about it. We know, we need to know what happened and how the hand of God has been on us because folks, I, I was going to rant and rave a little bit today, um, and if, if we're in Revelation 12, but such darkness is upon our land and upon the world right now, and <clears throat> if you want to turn with me, we're go our study's going to be Revelation 12, we're going to try to do all 17 verses today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for pa being patient with us. Uh, uh, yesterday was, was D-Day. We need to remember what has happened, how the Lord has brought us to where we are today, to study his word, to be free in our house, where we can have people over and set these machines up, and God's hand is on it, that the word of God can go out throughout the land, throughout the world. And I'm grateful for it because uh, 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3, tells us very, very clearly, among other verses, that there are false prophets that have gone out into the world. There are false prophets among the people, uh, even as there shall be false teachers among us, among you today. The false prophets were, of course, talking about the Old Testament. Did you just chop your hand off on that fan? Yeah, thanks. Okay. What are you doing over there? I'm trying to get some more circulation okay, in here before good. we die. Uh, <laughs> it's only about 95 degrees, right, outside. Uh, the false teachers, the, the uh, false prophets in the Old Testament, false teachers are coming in today, slithering in, and a lot of them are standing behind the pulpits. Bill, did you know that? Oh yeah. Teaching false doctrines, and and in the churches who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, the Bible says, even denying that the Lord, the the very one who has done everything for us, denying that the Lord bought them or brought them out, and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Folks, we need to understand today, you need to understand, you need to be in your word. You need to study to show yourself approved. A workman, the, the one that God is working in and through, you need to be working in your Bible and in your word, studying the word of God. Okay, Because many shall follow their uh, pernicious or immoral ways, and uh, by reason of whom are, are as a result of the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Do we see that today, folks, in our land? Do we... Do we see, Bill and Connie, that when we say something that is the word of God and people scoff at it and look at you and go, you're crazy, That's, that can't be right, that you're bigoted or you're narrow-minded, the truth shall be evil spoken of. It's okay to get your head in that camera, I guess. Bill does it pretty often. Well, we, need, we need to, we need to you know, make it um, interesting. So yeah. Well, you know what a, a lot of this behind this is? And we need to follow the money trail. That's where a lot of this goes in. A lot of these damnable heresies leads to a lot of money. Yeah. Okay, because um, uh, where is it? First Timothy six ten says, "For the love of money is the root of evil." Uh, it's not money, not having money, but the love of money, your your covetousness of money, 
and greed and telling people what they want to hear, that little tinkling sound that makes them feel good. Those are damnable heresies, and God says he is listening to that, he's watching that, and he's going to bring swift destruction upon that, okay? That's what the Word of, of God says. And remember, we've said this before several times uh, out of Jude, Jude verse 14, uh, 15, he lists uh, uh, different people there, and he uses the word ungodly four different times. Ungodly, 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 ungodly. And the last one is because of the words that were spoken against him. Okay, They're, they're not... They are our enemies in, in a way, in a sense, but they're his enemies. They're speaking against the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's move right along into our, um, thank you for listening to me to rant a little bit. I've got more, but for time's sake, we've got to get on. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, turn in your Bible. You, you can take as long as you want with that one. Oh, really? Well, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Roman, uh, where are we? Romans 12 is a good one, too. <laughs> Revelation well, let, well, let's, chapter 12. Let's, let's read Revelation 12, though, yes. Uh, we're going we're gonna to read a few of the uh, personalities that are coming on board um, uh, that are just being spelled out. And this one, there's going to be a two, three more uh, here. It's about a total of seven of them. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained uh, to be delivered. Now, I'll also remember verse 19 of the previous chapter when there was thunderings and an earthquake and great hell, stuff like that. It goes right into, and there uh, appeared also. So this is moving quickly, swiftly, uh, congealing together. Uh, all of these chapters here, 6 to 11 and 12 through 19, are all together. They're kind of a parallel going on together. Oh, that's a chocolate tooth bar, isn't it? It's melted. Is it mocha? Oh, mm -hmm. that's got ca caffeine in too. You got mm -hmm. all right there. Okay. Anyway, I can. It looks good. Well, it's too bad you can't eat and do the Bible study. This is true. Time. I do you have mine. I, I have mine for 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 afters. Alrighty. So here, this now, Bill and Connie, tell me who do you think? Who does the Bible say that this woman is? Okay. Let me read it again. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, upon her head, a, a crown of twelve stars. Now let's that go back. That sounds like Israel to me. That sounds like Israel. That would be because Israel. The Twelve tribes. Twelve yeah. tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. Also, back over there was a young man who used to have dreams, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, one of them was of the tribe of Israel. Mm -hmm. Remember, his name I believe was what? Started with a J. Anybody remember? Joseph. Joseph had a dream. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he dreamed, and he told his family about it, and they scoffed at him a little bit. Of course, his dad pondered things, these things, and wondered about that. And sure enough, it all happened. It, it mm -hmm. came true. So here we are. This is talking about Israel. The woman right off the bat is Israel. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, Genesis 37, 9 through 11. And I love that again, the 9-11, 9-1-1, how mm -hmm. the Lord puts certain things <laughs> where we think it's an emergency. Well, it's an emergency for us to understand. There's a lot of 9-1-1s in the Bible. And I love it. Anyway, that's one of them. Gen uh, uh, Genesis 37, uh, 9 through 11. And uh, she was travailing in birth. Now, if you're travailing in birth, if you're a, a literal woman, you're about to give birth, you're going to give birth to a baby, right? And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Now, who do you think that red dragon, uh, dragon is? It's going to tell who it is here Thank in a few you. minutes. Absolutely. If you want to go down to verse 9, it says in the great... Uh, dragon uh, uh, was cast out that old serpent called the devil mm -hmm. and Satan which had deceived the whole world that's who it's talking about here so right off the bat we've got Israel and we have Satan Israel the land of Israel the people of Israel and the devil the enemy the slanderer now then uh, it says and his tail in verse 4, drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them uh, to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered uh, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So who do you think the child is there? Jesus. Jesus the Christ. So who do we have so far? Let's list these main players so far. We have Israel. We have Satan himself. And we have Jesus the Christ. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's who we're talking about here. Now then, notice that, that verse there where it said, His tail swooped out through the heavens and did what? What happened over in Isaiah chapter 14, I believe it is, and also Ezekiel 28, but Isaiah 
tells it very clearly about this is Lucifer. And when uh, iniquity was found in him because he stood up and faced the great throne of God, whom he was supposed to be protecting the uh, righteousness, the holiness of God. He was the most created, most beautifully created being. And he had the I attitude. He said it five times, I, 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 I will. And the last one was, and I'll be even like the Most High God. Even he knew at that time he could not be God. But he was deceiving. And what did he do with his tail when he was cast out from the heavenlies down into the aerial and the celestial? What happened with that tail? What did, what, who did he, he take? He wiped out the stars. Well, who are the stars? Who are those stars? The tribes of Israel. Who are those stars that he took? He, We have two what to every one of his what? When? Angels! Okay. Angels! Fallen angels! You know the story. You're just chewing a clipboard and you can't say it right now. Angels! We'll use that when, he, when his <laughs> tail drew the third part of the stars of mm -hmm. heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered uh, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Folks, from the beginning, from his inception of the iniquity that was found into him, he has been against the land of Israel because who is going to bring forth this child, the Holy One? Israel. Jesus himself says he is the king of the what? Jews. Jews. Israel. Satan. Jesus the Christ. Let's read on. Is this interesting to y'all? It's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting because I never looked at it that way. Tell us more. Tell you more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 5 says, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up into God and to his throne. Folks, in that one verse right there sums up what we have been discussing about Revelation. Revelation tells what was, what, what is, is, and what, what is to come. The past, the present, and the future. Let me read it again. Let's put some little things in there. And she brought forth a man-child. Was Jesus born? Amen. Yes, he was. He was humbled. He came to this earth. He was born in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. That's the past. What's the next verse? What's the next part of that verse? says, to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. Is he doing that right now? No. When will he do that? When his millennial kingdom comes back to the earth. That's the future. Mm -hmm. And he was caught up into God and to his throne. That's, Jesus, that's the present time that John is writing this. He saw him. He was with him. The present time he was with Jesus the Christ. And then he saw and that he ascended into heaven. Remember, we used to read it last week, I believe it was. Acts chapter, what was it, 1 verse 9. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? Mm -hmm. This same Jesus that ye see go up into heaven shall do what? Shall, shall so come in like manner. You've got the past, the present, and the future right there, folks. He physically came into this world. That's another thing that the uh, Antichrist likes to deny is that Jesus the Christ came into this world. He was in this world. He came in the flesh in this world. He was born. He took up on humanity. And the Antichrist will deceive you by saying he really didn't come in the flesh. Well, folks, the Bible clearly says that he is coming back in the flesh and we will see him as he is. And if he came back in the flesh, he had to have left in the flesh because he took upon our flesh. But we are going to be glorified. In the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed from this corruption and put on incorruption. We're going to be changed from uh, mortality and put on immortality. And Christ Jesus took upon that himself. So if you have someone that tells you that no, Jesus didn't come in the flesh, he wasn't really here, he was just a good teacher, that's a false prophet. Amen. That's a false prophet. That's a false teacher because they're denying that Christ Jesus came in the flesh. That's your first part of understanding that there is God, not just a God or the God, but there is God, and that his son, Christ Jesus, came in the flesh. So let's read on. And this is all deceptions of this one here that we just read about called the red dragon. Why red? He's bloody. He kills. He destroys. Why dragon? That's his character. That's who he looks like. He is ominous, and he is 
um, uh, a, a ruthless of, in character, but he can also appear as what? An angel of light. An angel of light. So there is discernment that has to go on. Ephesians 5.19 tells us that these Holy Spirit quenchers. Have you heard that before? They quench not the Holy Spirit. And John, 1 John 4, 1 said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but, the, uh, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. How can you do that? Well, first of all, you have to know the Word of God, right? That's right. <laughs> and did you know that uh, John, uh, uh, both of you, if you would, turn to James. I'll give you one verse here to turn to. J uh, James, I think it's James 1, 5. I believe it is. Best my memory. Uh, I love James. James, James is a good, uh, he's a, it's good reading. James chapter 1 verse 5, I think it is, and we all read it out, uh, uh, both of you read it from different, uh, we got different versions of when it's you get to it. James is hiding from you. Yes. Well, it's J-A-M-E-S 1, 5. It's way over there in the, in the New Testament. Just turn back from Revelation just a few pages. It. Read James 1, 5. I'll read the next verse while you turn there. Okay. Verse 6 of Revelation 12 says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God, and they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. One thousand two hundred and how many? One thousand two hundred sixty days. days. Okay. So this is the mighty hand of God that has already done this for the land of Israel when he pulled them out of Pharaoh's rule and reign. When he brought them up out of the land of Egypt, he divinely take, uh, took care of them, and he fed them, and he watered them, and he did all that throughout the wilderness, throughout the manna, and the water, and the springs, and stuff like that, in his own divine help. Are both of you at James 1.5? Have you read it? Have you looked at it already yes. before I ask you to read it? What does it say? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask a God that will give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. Read yours. Mine says, if you need wisdom, ask our gracious God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. In other words, he is ready. He will not hesitate his mighty hand to put on your spirit, to put in between your ears and in your heart, because uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, this is one of my favorite verses on my card, my little... Uh, cards that I have that says study to show thyself approved Amen. how do you do that you open your Bible uh -huh. uh, Bill and I can't ba touch back to back and rub our uh, 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 shoulder blades together and, it, and me go mm, okay now you've got every, all the knowledge I have and I have all the knowledge that's not the way you do it you open up the word of God you study and there is no excuse for you to not do that because study to show thyself approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed I am not ashamed of this gospel because why it is the power unto salvation salvation from damnation. Amen. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We are here, folks, let me just say this uh, into both of these cameras today, and I hope you've gone into this as much as you can, and you're still here with us today. If you tune in to this bald-headed dude in Cumbie, Texas, I am going to sit here, and I am going to read out of the word of God, and to the best of my ability, I am going to share with what the Lord has given me to expound and pronounce the word of truth. I don't want to throw a lot of my own opinions in there. I do from time to time because I have my own opinions about everything. But we're going to study the word of God. Our houses open up. Connie and I open up to Bill. He loves the word of God. He came from Catholicism. He was saved on Easter Sunday about four years ago. And he loves the word of God. And for you folks that are tuned in today, we're going to study the word of God because I am not ashamed of this word. It is God's word. It is he that gave it to us. It is the written word about the living word. And Christ Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua Messiah, is his name. Woo, woo. Way to go, Sam. I love it. I love it. Thank you very much. And by the way, I will not ask for one penny. I don't need your money, and I don't want your money. Can we get back to the worship? Where did that come from? <laughs> He's been watching a lot of televangelists. Mm. <laughs> okay. So we, we should be in 12, verse 7. Yes. Okay. But that's his divine help in verse 6. Where they, uh, Now, if you want to say that's Petra, that's all right. There's a place where God has already, in his wisdom, when this happens in the tribulation time, in the great tribulation time, th this is going to happen, okay? Because the next few verses are going to reveal a little bit more about verse 6, about what is happening, hell on earth is what it's going to be about. 
Verse 7, read, read verse 7, Bill. Read it out and with authority. Rawr, rawr. Okay. Rawr. Then there was a war in heaven. Mm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. Mm. And the dragon lost the battle. <laughs> he and he and his angels were forced out of heaven. The great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with his little one-third band of angels. Oh, I love it. Well, there you have it. Doesn't that go right back up to verse 4 and explain what happened there? Yes. His old tail, when he was being banded out, okay? Now, we do know that Satan, the word Satan, Hebrew, for slanderer, accuser, accuser of the brethren, if you want to read the first few verses in Job, it gives a very clear description of what's going on. Okay? Now I have those in order. No, you don't. Now I don't. Well, shoot. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Well, is it supposed you're, to make a picture? You're, you're, you're testing me, aren't you? Is it supposed to be a picture? <laughs> no, well, yes. And, and, oh, okay. Yes, sort of. I, we'll, we'll redo it later on. That's yes, right. That's for our right. next study, okay? All but right. notice these. Uh, you... <laughs> Sam. Put your hands in your are pockets. You, are you pulling his leg or what? No, he's no. not. He's serious. <laughs> no. Anyway. He, hopefully this is off camera. Okay. No, it's know. not. <laughs> it's not off camera. Okay. And anyway. And do you want to know where your time was? Sure. What are you telling me? 2343. Do you think we need to stop it like we did last time? I'm going to try to just do Let's just do the one. whole thing. Yes. Amen. But it's yeah, okay if, if you, you don't stop it. If you now. stop it, then we, we lose the atmosphere. Right. There you go. Now, notice this war in heaven. Okay, this war in heaven, Michael and his archangels, and right there, let's stop with the word Michael. Michael is mentioned, I do believe, five times in the word of God. And every time, if you want to count it and get really deep into it, every time the word Michael, uh, the archangel Michael is mentioned, it is of or concerning with Israel, the Jewish people. Every time. You can start back over in the, in, in, in the middle parts of Daniel, Daniel, several verses in Daniel. And then in Jude, uh, he talks about Moses, the body of Moses. Moses was what? The leader of the Jews, mm -hmm. okay, and then and right here he's talking about the archangel Michael coming up, and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, uh, and his angels, and yours even said the third of them, right? Yes, sir. The third, okay. These are the ones that the demonic ones that chose to follow after him because remember, for many times, these demonic angels that are uh, that are now demons now mm -hmm. we, we won't call them angels anymore. We'll call them demons now. They saw. Lucifer in heaven. They saw the stones that he was made with. They saw the instruments that he had uh, governed over. Uh, because Ezekiel tells us very clearly he's over all that. He was the, he was the Lord of all that. It also tells us that the, uh, Paul writes to the Corinthians and Ephesians that he is the God of this world and he's the prince of the power of the air. That's who we battle with. We're not battling against people. i got to keep that in my mind, folks. I'm not battling against flesh and blood, but the principalities of the air. Remember when Daniel prayed for 20, 21 days, almost three three weeks there? Oh, Lord, over and over and over again. And what happened? Yeah, I heard you the first time, but hey, there's stuff going on in heaven. That makes me wonder about this verse here. Yeah, yeah we, we heard you, but uh, we got, you know, the priority was to fight in the, uh, the bad guys. We're fighting the bad guys in heaven. Now, That's notice right. it here, and let me let me ask you a question. And Now, this you don't have to stick a fork at me for asking this. And verse 8 says, And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Okay, now we know that he is still governing as the little G.O.D. over this earth and over the aerial and the celestial. We know that right now. He has the power to do that right now. But let's sum this up, this part here, with this next verse. And the great dragon, verse 9, was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, Diablos. Okay, that old serpent, why? Why does it say old serpent first? Because that's where, that's where we first saw him right. as an old serpent mm -hmm. over in Genesis in the garden, slithering around, deceiving the early mankind. That's right. And whispering in their ears, is that really what he said? Yes, it was really what he said. They should have been walking with God and not listening to Satan. That's why he's called old serpent to begin with. That's the first description of him right there. Then the next one is what? Called the devil and Satan. Well, those are two different, those are the same word, meaning the same thing, the same entity, who he is. Devil, Greek, mm -hmm. Diablo, Diablos, Satan, Hebrew, the accuser, the one that stands before God and says, look at Connie, look at Bill, look what they have done. 
did you know their thoughts today, God? I know you did. You, oh, they were thinking bad thoughts. I could see in their eyes. All my little minions that I have running around, they were watching them. Did you see where Bill went? Did you see what he did? You know, this is what they did. This is his accusing characteristic. Okay? Thank God that when I stand before God, he doesn't look at just me. What does he look at? The powerful, righteous, perfect blood of Christ Jesus. Amen. My advocate, my counselor, the one that stands in my place when holy God would look at me just as he was going to do all of Israel at one time and wipe them off the face of the earth. And Moses stood up and said, do me instead and leave them. Have mercy on them. Thank God for his mercy and grace today. Woo-woo! Woo-woo! The next one, y'all forgive me for getting a little excited about all this good stuff here going on which deceiveth the whole world. Now that's his description, what's going on. There's a whole lot in that too. Uh, so uh, in other words, earth now is going, oh no, we've heard that before. It's moaning, it's groaning because this earthquake that has happened. And now then, the rest of heaven is going, oh yes, he's been cast out. Oh, what does the next verse say, Bill? Read the next verse. Is that nine? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and 10, read 10. Okay. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has come at last, salvation and power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. Hmm. That's 10. That's 10, yeah. Okay, this is what is happening still to this day. But notice that he is now cast out of his rightful place, of course, where he was as Lucifer. He is now cast out from that place of power that he has and the saints that are there already that we've already read about, the angelic beings and the saints, the creatures, the holy creatures before God, and the saints there that have been saying, how long, how long? This is starting of the answer of how long because now he's been cast out. Now note in our minds that we know in his mind that he knows in his mind his time is limited he now has what 42 months he knows this from this moment on mm -hmm. now let me ask you here's the question that I was going to ask that just uh, whether it makes sense or not if it doesn't make sense to you at all just look at me scratch your head and go next verse please but just just ponder for this just a moment okay because we know this has happened before, an aerial battle, spiritual battle. Daniel talks about it very uh, explicitly, okay? Mm -hmm. And we know that it has, happens today. <clears throat> in 401, where most expositors say that the rapture has happened, and I would like to go ahead and, and agree with that too. We are out of here by this time, by the way. If it's 401, great. That's wonderful. When uh, the Bible says, and, 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 and the voice said, come up hither. That's wonderful. Uh, I know it was, he was talking specifically to John. If you want to relate that over and overload that into the church, wonderful. That's, that's great. I know we're not here during this time of the Great Tribulation. Think of me for just a moment that when we are called, when the Lord steps out and calls the church at rapture time, and this war that's going on that was just mentioned, now think of me, go with me on some deep thoughts here. This war that was just mentioned, in seven, and there was a war in heaven. Do you think that that has already, our rapture has already stirred up Satan and his minions, the millions and millions of demons and demonic spirits throughout the heavenlies, throughout the stellar and celestial, that when we are raptured up, that they don't try one more time to thwart the church from going up to heaven? I know they can't. And a lot of people might have just said, oh, no, he's crazy. He's getting off on all those crap. But just think about it. It's already, we've already been told about it in Daniel that there's been war in heaven. When we're called from here, now, do you, is that, am I asking it right? Mm -hmm. When do the you, rapture comes. When yes, when the rapture, and we're taken away. When we're mm -hmm. taken away. And we're going up in heaven. And the Bible of Corinthians says, in the twinkling of an eye. Twinkling of an eye. Okay. But don't you think that, that Satan and his minions are ready and standing at guard trying to maybe fourth that too? Oh yeah. There's I'm sure warders. he is. What yeah. this there's war right there. <laughs> there's warders. There's warders. They're bad warders. I love that word warders, yeah. okay? Yeah. Just just think about it for or, or or it could make him angry because all these people he didn't think he could get 
get to. Mm -hmm. He thought he got to. In reality, he didn't get to. He didn't to. get to, absolutely. And these millions of people come up during the Lord and they go by to say, go, hi, toodaloo. Bye. Hi, bye. Bye. Toodaloo, yeah. Bye -bye. And so all of his minions are going on, you know, trying to swoop through heaven right quick. Because remember, our God is omnipresent. Amen. Our God is everywhere all the time. He has that ability. Our God is omnipotent and omniscient and all that other alms, uh, but Satan is not. Satan has minions and pyramids of, of uh, generals and colonels and sergeants and, and uh, privates. He has a, a hundred millions of privates all around here doing what he wants to do. And the, a couple of master sergeants, too. Okay. Just, but just but you know, the thing I think is, is what people, maybe they don't realize, but God is allowing this to happen. He's still in charge. He's still in charge. Absolutely. Yeah. He's allowing this to happen. So if he's allowing this to happen, it's your chance now to change. You've yeah. already seen the rapture people mm -hmm. go. I mean, in one minute you're there, and the next thing you're, everybody's gone. Right. Not everybody, but, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. be gone. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, what, what, what happened? Yep. Boom. Boom. Right here in this it's, book. It's right here in this book. Right. But you know what? Go back up to, to the middle part of 9 there, which it says, which deceiveth the whole world. Okay? Now then, he knows his time is nearing, the end of his time, because notice that it said he was cast out of heaven. Mm -hmm. How many times after his fall do you see him cast? He's cast out of heaven at that time as far as his prominence place of the most beautifully created. Okay? Wasn't happy with number two. Wasn't happy being silver medal. Okay? Who does number two work for? <laughs> he still works for God. Yes, you. you yeah, but he also yeah. should know his time is limited. His time is limited. He knows that now. He knows that. Now then, all hell is breaking out on this earth because Literally. he is going after this here woman that we just read about, Israel, mm -hmm. to do what? Folks, let me tell you, and this is at the end also of this study, Satan's main goal from the beginning has been to kill out Israel. Look, look what has happened. He did it in the, in the garden with... Uh, Remember the, the brothers killing each the one brother killing the other brother, and the mm -hmm. ground crying out? Okay, look here. Uh, Pharaoh and his reign over Egypt, and how hard it got. It, it got even harder when they asked for just a little reprieve of, can we, can we get, and then the Egyptians had, well, not only do this, you're not only going to get us to do a step for you, you're going to have to do that step too and make even more brick. Okay? So there, and then who comes along a little after that? Haman. Mm -hmm. Remember Haman's plan to kill out all of the Jews? Uh, remember, uh, let me see, who else? Herod's edict that went out when Christ Jesus, when the, the, uh, the uh, uh, noise was being scattered across the land, that, that there's a new king in the, in the land coming in. His name is Christ Jesus, the Messiah being, this prophecy being fulfilled. Everybody, all the little babies uh, from two and under, the little boys, remember that? All that's going on. Moses, all that that's time too, with the children of Israel. And then this good old boy with a little funny mustache over in... in um, Europe a few years ago, little boy. yeah, and 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 I loved it when I asked my dad about it. I said, "Daddy, what you know?" After it was waning down, he said, uh, "I said, did you ever get to see any of his you know personal stuff?" He said, "Yeah, me and a group of the, my buddies got in a truck one day and drove up a big old mountain uh, to one of his houses, Adolf Hitler's houses." And I said, "What'd you see?" And he said, "We didn't see him. He wasn't there anymore." Mm -hmm. Well, this is what's happened. He was cast out. That's right. He was cast out then. He was cast out then. He was cast out after Haman. Uh, after Adolf Hitler, he's been cast out. Uh, he is going to be cast out here, as we see it again from Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. And folks, he is going to be cast out one of these days uh, from all of his rule and reign and it'd be cast into uh, the lake of fire. Well, I think another guy that probably we could put on that list. I do that every time. I don't want to do that. I think another guy we could put on the list is a gentleman from Russia called Stalin. Oh. Stalin, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you still have your water? Yes. Do you need any more? No, I'm all right. Okay. Now, let's read on. Uh, yeah, he was just a murderer. Uh, was that uh, all? I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a different story there, yeah. Now, what does 11 say? And they overcame him by what? The blood, blood of the Lamb. The blood the of the lamb. the lamb. Who is this now? These are the people on earth. These are tribulation okay. saints, okay? Because why? where's the church? Rapture. Rapture, Rapture. okay? Verse, uh, verse 10 there, Bill Red said, For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. It's relentless. He is relentless in his accusations. No wonder they all say, Whoa, finally, mm -hmm. 
finally, you know, they've been saying, uh, uh, Sammy paraphrasing, oh God, just get the hell out of here to, to this man on here. Well, finally he did. Finally it's happened. It has now happened. But where was he cast? Onto the earth. Woe unto the earth dwellers. But how are they going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb, folks, that's your only way out is the by the blood of the Lamb. It's the only way out today. It is the only way. Jesus the Christ is the only way to God the Father. Mm -hmm. We are not innately good. I was born into a, a human nature when I came into this world. I was in flesh, and that flesh was bound for the destiny away from God. And in the fullness of time, Christ, Jesus had already appeared in this world due to his father's perfect timing and perfect will. And when he died on that cross, that blood that was shed was uh, for the remission of sin. And when he turned my light on, that blood had covered and done away with my sin. He turned my light on. He turned my spirit on. I have been gone, I have gone from spiritually dead to thriving and living. And whether this body goes into the grave or wherever before the rapture or before the Lord calls us home, same thing, uh, before he calls me home personally, I will see a physical death that will be the first death and that will be the only death that a believer experiences. Because after that is the power of the resurrection. One way or the other, resurrected. Mm -hmm. The blood of the Lamb. That's what the Bible says there. The blood. Of, how do they overcome? The blood of the Lamb. Okay. I, made, I made a note here on my Bible sure. after chapter after verse eleven. It says the great tribulation tribulation begins. Mm -hmm. This is this is the, the great tribulation is boiled up to it now. Uh, the uh, as we're seeing this, remember the parallelism going on from six to eleven, twelve to the middle of nineteen. I think it's nineteen fifteen. Okay, because the next couple of characters we're going to read about is this one's first minion. It's going to be this man. This one here is going to be a man called the Antichrist. He's in the next chapter. Yep. Uh, chapter 13, the Antichrist and the False Prophet. That's going to be a marvelous chapter to study because a, a lot of people don't study it correctly. Hmm? What a coincidence. 13. 13. How about that? Mm -hmm. Sure enough. So, and, and the end of 12 says, He hath but a short time. What does it say before that? Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Folks, I keep going back up to the middle of 9 there, which is uh, deceives the whole world. He is going to be around and spreading lies and spreading falsities of worldwide, internationally, about who? Israel. Israel. That's his target. Israel and then the saints, the rest of the saints, the other saints on this earth. Israel is his target. That's who he is because where did his enemy come from? Israel brought forth the man-child. Israel. The Redeemer of the whole world. The Redeemer. The Redeemer of mankind. Absolutely. 13 now says, uh, Revelation 12 and 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted who? The woman. The woman. The woman that we just read about and discussed with. Israel. And no, Israel. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Which brought forth the man child who is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus the Christ. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, now, this has been mentioned also over in Exodus, I believe it is, middle part of Exodus, Exodus 14, I think, uh, where God's divine power was upon Israel. And he said, I, don't you know that I've come to you uh, with great wings as an eagle and have taken care of you? Okay? I would not want to get in a fight with a parent eagle. Okay? First of all, their wingspan's about yeah. seven feet. I've seen And they got ones. one of them big old beaks that stick out there. And mm -hmm. can you imagine Father God protecting his people? I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to get in a fight with any of them things that came down. This is true, yeah. <laughs> if I can make a point on verse 12, it says, Therefore sure. rejoice, O heaven, O heavens, and you will live in the heavens rejoice, because mm -hmm. guess who's gone? Yep. But terror will come on the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that his... He has little time. Absolutely. That is exactly what is going on because uh, uh, you, you, yours is a warning. Mine says, woe. Uh, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Folks, that's why we tell you the truth today. That's why we tell you the truth of the Bible. You do not want to be one of these earth dwellers at this time. You do not want to be here on this planet at this time. 
it's going to be hell on earth. Satan himself, imagine that. Go with me for a minute in your mind. Satan himself is going to be cast upon this earth. It's going to be in the bodily form of one that's called the Antichrist. Complete Antichrist. And bold about it. Okay? We now see in this world, as we're told in the Bible, that the, the spirit of Antichrist is already in this world. Do you feel it when you get up and go out in public today, folks? Yes. I do. You can see it in the, in the people's eyes sometimes. Just go to any local store. You can see it in people's eyes. Antichrist is out there. And they know you. When Jesus came up to people in the, new, in the, uh, in the scriptures, in Matthew, Mark, or Luke, or John, read any of those. I encourage you to read all of them. Read, read Mark first, then Matthew, then Luke, and then John. Read any of them. When Jesus approached, it says the demo, demons knew who he was. Demons know him, and they also do what? Tremble! Tremble. We should be trembling in front of God. We should. We should be in awe. That should be our, the only time I use the word awe or awesome is speaking about Holy Heavenly Father God. Now that he, when he, he knows and we know, they know that he has a short time and the dragon saw the woman was cast out and now then she is being nourished, she's being taken care of, she's in the wilderness. It doesn't say specifically there. If you want to go to other vers verses, uh, God has taken care of his people divinely before. He is going to do it one more time here. Into her place where she is nourished, taken care of, food and water, shelter, for a time, a times and a half a times, from the face of the serpent. Now, what is time? One year. Mm -hmm. What's times? One year times two. Uh, two years. One year and one year is two years. What's a half a time? A half year. A half year. So you've got... Three and a half years. There you go. 42 months, 1,260 days. 42 months. That's another timeline to go with. So if that is now being said, what you just said, the Great Tribulation time, this is the bad Great Tribulation time. This is the past the midpoint. We're going to read now. Remember, this is a parallelism. This is the, end, the middle part and the ending part of chapter 12. 13 takes us a, a little bit along with what's going on here with 6 and 11 going on. You've got the seals and the trumpets and the seven bowls or vials, whichever one your version says, that are about to be happening, uh, that are about to happen, which gets worse and progressively worse. Okay, mm -hmm. So here we have a three and a half time, three and a half year span. So that's another miracle of God that's going on in 14. And the serpent, uh, and, uh, by the way, it said from the face of the serpent. So it's specific. It's specific that it is Satan, the one that was just described in 9, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, is after this people, after this nation, after the, these people who they are. Okay, And the serpent cast out, um, and the serpent cast out of his... Mouth, water. Uh, well, I've got other things. Just to make sure. I've got other things in my Bible here. Yeah. That, that doesn't go right into that. Uh, cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of a flood. Now remember, the uh, and we'll go two or three different thoughts here, and they all make sense. They are all real. They're all whichever one or two or three that you are. Believe and are diehard in it's all connected. When God brought the land, uh, the people uh, out of Egypt, where do they? What do they have to cross? They had to cross the Jordan, uh, not the Jordan, the, the white and blue, red sea. The Red Sea. Oh boy, sometimes my the Red does not Sea. Work. What happened in the Red Sea? He parted the waters. He parted the waters. Mm -hmm. What happened after they crossed? And Pharaoh's army was following. They was drowned. They yeah. was. <laughs> they were drowned. You are getting Texan, ain't you? Yeah. Thank well, God you. Not you, only were you, they drowned, so were their horses and everything else. And, and that okay? was just his head, folks. That, that was a, that's 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 <laughs> one. Okay, that was a flood. We've also seen other floods. Now, then, liken this into either physical, in the physical, with his great army. A flood coming in, like Sennacherib did with the Assyrians over mm -hmm. the northern part of Israel. Okay, right. that we're reading about in Isaiah. See, what threw me was I was thinking about the first flood uh -huh. back with Noah. Noah, yeah. And then, and you went ahead to the to that, and and then I I'm colorblind sometimes. 
Did you like that? I did. Well, I, had, I had deer in the headlights. Well, thank y'all for sticking with me, too, and, and all your listeners, because I, I watch these from time to time. I re-watch them, uh, however I can get it on, or YouTube. And I say, oh, Lord, I didn't mean to say that name or whatever, so hopefully y'all understand I'm not trying to misguide you. I just have a lot to think of, and I really can't hardly read the script, my words in here because I've written so much over it. But we're all human, so we make mistakes. Anyway, this flood here is coming up. Water, yes, he could open up uh, the waters, have power over that. It could also be a physical flood of his, his um, uh, armies. It could also be the spiritual demonic power that's coming here too. A flood mm -hmm. to try to quench out, to try to squelch out the land of Israel, the believers, mm -hmm. the Jewish people, okay, that are going to be turned to God, mm -hmm. okay? After the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Man-made tidal wave, uh, swamp, low-lying areas, uh, the whatever else that could be going on. I just mentioned those three. They all will work. They all are true. They are all biblical. Whichever way you want to do it, or all of them. I believe all of them. Uh, it's going to be a satanic power. Okay? All kinds of attacks on Israel. Let's, let's sum it up with that. All kinds of attacks on Israel. Okay? So, Satan trying to destroy Israel. Verse 16. Connie, read verse 16 out loud. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Can we keep going? Yeah, do, do say anything else. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which kept the commandments of God and had the testimony of Jesus Christ. Testimony of who? Jesus Christ. The testimony of who? Jesus Christ. So if you have a testimony, what does what what's testimony mean? That means that that's what you have experienced. That's you your personal a, testimony. You cannot give a testimony for something mm -hmm. that you did not witness yourself. Yep. Or be part of. Or be right. There you go. You're, that's your testimony. Uh, back in Isaiah 59, 19, it says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Uh, that would be the east, I would assume. Uh, when the enemy shall come in, what? Like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. His Amen. divine power. Folks, you cannot get away from the truth of this word. Well, I can't get away from it. People are trying to get away from these false. Would bastards be a good word there? I think bastards would be because they're not of God. The, the Bible clearly says that. Okay? And I'm not mm -hmm. trying to be cussing or anything. Do I have another one? Okay. Have one more sheet. The, the liars... The deceivers, the antichrist, the anti -messiah, anti messiahs, and Messiah, Yeshua Messiah, that's Christ Jesus. Because I study out of my Messianic Jewish Bible, it's beautiful. I love it. I love the way it's written. It has Hebrew words in there. Uh, I have to turn back into the back of the little glossary to find out what, what it means. But the anti, anti ones are this. 1 John 2 22 says, Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist. He is against. Christ Jesus. Do, do we see that in our world today? Mm -hmm. Do we see things and oh and gosh. and powers that are against yeah. Jesus? I would say even further, I would say not only are they against Jesus, but they are against his beliefs. Yes, and what he's taught. Yeah. Because they're, they're denying that Jesus and the Father are one. Right. That's right. The Gospels clearly say Jesus himself in your red letter edition says, my Father and I are one. If you've seen me, right. you've seen my Father. Okay? Thank God for lids. Yeah. <laughs> okay? The Gospel of John, 10, 30, I and my Father are one. Mark 12, 32. Uh, for, there, uh, for there's one God, and there is none other but He. Jesus was, uh, He was more than man, folks. He was more than just a good teacher. Don't be in a conversation with someone that they, if you pronounce, if you say the word, if you proclaim and witness and testify that Jesus Christ, and then they try to deny that, they try to twist it and belittle it and start saying, yeah, I think he was a good teacher. He was a good guy. Uh, I think if he was here today, we'd be good buddies. No! No! We're talking about the Son of God. We're talking about that one that put on human flesh. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean, class? God with us. God with us. If God looked down upon your wretched soul, Bill, and yours, Connie, and mine, and you today that are looking and listening to this and going, thank God, the first thing that you did and you looked in your mirror, thank God that, that, that you saved a wretched soul like me. That's what you should do every day when you get up. Go to your mirror and look in there, and that laver that's below it, 
tells back what Exodus talks about, washing away, you wash away all the night, uh, and then you look in the mirror and you thank, thank God for what he's done to your soul. He washed away that. The blood of Christ Jesus did that. Jesus was not just a good teacher. He was not just a good buddy to these guys. He was God with us. Okay? 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. It is steady. Do we need something steady and sure today? Yes. Do we need something to stand on? Do we need to open up the Word of God and say, That's the truth right there. I need it. I need to live it. I need it in my body. I need to share it with those who I can share it with because it is the one true foundation in this world and it will not pass away. Amen. It will not pass away. Heaven and earth may pass away. We're going to see that in the next few verses, the next few chapters here. Uh, the newness coming up. Remember you mentioned the great flood a while ago. Right. Well, guess what's coming next? Yeah. Fire. Fire. And folks, be careful of songs that you listen to, too. Uh -oh. Be careful of songs and music that you listen to. And if I am stepping on some toes today, praise God for it. I got great big feet, and I'm going to step all over them when it comes to some of this crazy music that's going on today that they call themselves Christians. They're as just as anti-Christ as they can possibly be when they start using the word anointing or spirit or fire or whatever else, and they have no idea what's going on. At least some of the audience might not. Some of the leaders probably do because that's why they're pumping that crap into the uh, what's called churches. The emphasis is not on Jesus. It's not on Jesus. Absolutely. You have got, not. To, you've got to stick with some, with the music that is about Jesus and drawing you closer to Him. Absolutely. Because if you mention the Holy Spirit, well, the Holy Spirit points you to Christ. That's right. Not to Himself. That's but to Christ. Two functions right now. You hear, hear the word unction? Well, the function that He has right now, two things, two main things, is to point souls to Christ Jesus when this word is opened up and read and your spirit says that's the truth that's the Holy Spirit leading you to that light mm -hmm. capital L-I-G-H-T and then he protects you Amen. that's what he's doing right now now the rest of that verse that I was starting to quote a while ago uh, 2 Timothy 2 19 it, having this seal we have just read about these 144,000 folks Bill Connie you me all of us today that are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ has been called out we're sealed because you know why the Lord knoweth them that are His. Amen. Isn't it good to be known? Yes. And it's good to be known by God. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. You know, it, just put my little two cents worth here. You know, I recently have been spending a lot of time outside of my backyard, and I'll go back there, sitting in my little chair, and the, the breeze blowing by, you can smell the trees and the grass. You can hear the birds, and you can see the squirrels. You can hear all of this. It's so quiet and peaceful back there that it gives you, it gives me the chance and the time to be thankful for what what I have and my belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and all the wonders around me. And even though it's only in a small area that I live in, it's just every, all of His glory is there. Mm -hmm. I mean, animals. Nature, his creation. All yes. the creation is there. Born, yeah. The sky, blue skies, the sun, the clouds, the trees. Um, I love watching your squirrels and the blue jays go at it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> we were there. If, you, whoever, if you're watching today, but you miss on our bill, and when, we, when I go to his house on Wednesdays, it's a wonderful study in Isaiah. How well is it going along with this Isaiah, uh, Isaiah and Revelation? It's like they're that. They're like well, that. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know? and, 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 Parallels. And we've always, and I've always mentioned it that Isaiah was written 561 years BC, 680. Whatever, 681. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but a long time ago. A long time ago, <laughs> yes. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Well, well, that's the power of God. That's the Holy Spirit right. of God. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He breathed into these men to do that. And, and also, uh, and we hear this a lot to the uh, uh, choose you this day whom you will serve over uh, Joshua 24, 15. We hear that a lot uh, about choose you this day whom you will serve. As far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, the middle part of that, we live out the middle part of that, is because there's a bunch of other gods that is mentioned there. There's a bunch of other gods in that. If you ever read that whole verse, there's other gods that are mentioned there. What are y'all doing? I'm getting ready to go. Oh. <laughs> 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 you know, no, Sam, wrap it up. Let's get out of here. No, right? no, no. I just get, you, no, you, I was just getting this here. I mean, no, uh, thanks, I got one more verse. for putting me on the spot. There, I got one more verse. Well, I saw you doing something, and Connor was looking. I don't know what they're doing over here. So, 
Uh, I'll just talk to these people over We're here. We're playing then. Monopoly, and I'm uh, winning. Are you winning? Okay. <laughs> Second Timothy four. Y'all turn, turn, Connie, turn, turn on back a few pages to your left there. Second Tim Timothy four three, Second and read that Timothy out. Timothy four three. Yes, and uh, and read that out loud. Second Timothy four three. And the reason, folks, that I have gotten on this rant about falseness is because we're coming to the one in um, the next chapter, uh, Revelation 13. It's the beast from the sea and the beast from the land. Uh, they're the Antichrist. They're the Antichrist and the false prophet. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now then, what is being set up for them right now, we see that going on in our lives. Are you there? there? Yeah. Uh, Timothy 4, 3. 2 Timothy 4, 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Were you mouthing all that while I was reading it? Yes, I was. And, and notice... Uh, Isn't go, it go, funny how he can make himself sound like me? Go ahead. <laughs> Next verse, please. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Can you believe that? Do you see that going on today, Bill? Do you, do you see that? Do you see the prevalence of that going on today? Oh, oh, pastor, please don't tell me that I'm a dirty, rotten sinner. I just don't like those words. Uh, first of all, I'm not. I'm inherently good. Uh, and me and little Johnny here are just perfect, and he never does anything. And, oh, Lord God in heaven, help us. We just got through reading Mark and uh, uh, studying in Mark just a few months ago. And folks, let me tell you, the little folks that Jesus encountered that were all demon-possessed. Then he comes to the ones that, that are not, that are his children, and he says, don't permit these to come unto me. Right. But the ones that he met along the way, don't look down and call them a little angel. They're not. They're not. Remember, that's like we were. And we're we know we twisted. were angels. We are twisted. <laughs> we, our society has twisted that around to make, that, to make everybody think that everything is okay. Uh, it's not universalism. We're not all going to heaven. We're not all going to heaven. Well, basically what, what is happening is the, the devil is exactly what he wants for everybody to think they're okay. They're going to heaven and mm -hmm. they believe, you know, this and that. But he's going back going, <laughs> Well, this I got a place for you and it's somewhere else. <laughs> there you go. Sure enough. Well, this all leads us now, and I'll stop with this verse here, uh, over in 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 through 12. Uh, turn that, turn there, and Connie, read that. Uh, the delusion that we were talking about just then in, in Revelation 12, um, Revelation 12, 9, which says, which deceiveth the whole world. Read, read 2 Thessalonians 2, I think it is. 2 Thessalonians 2. Uh -huh. 10 through 12. 10 through 12? Yeah. Okay. And with all, yes, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, who sent it? Who sent the delusion? Who is the great deceiver? But who sent the delusion? Ooh. Have you read that part? <clears throat> Have you scratched your head where it says, read it again. God will send. Ah, God Why? will send them strong delusion. Yes. Why? Because of their continual rebellion. Contempt. Yep. And by believing <coughs> these false prophets that stand before them and false teachers that stand before them, false prophets in the Old Testament, false teachers today doing the same thing, twisting and turning the truth of God. Is that... Uh, we, we, oh, there's more. Okay. That they all might be uh -oh, damned who mm. believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Mm, mm, mm. Going right along with who? The son of perdition. Who you we're see, fixed to you read will about. get what you want. Yes. If you keep wanting to be deceived, you will be deceived. Okay. And remember, at this time, folks, we mentioned what the Holy Spirit is going. Yeah. What you, you, What are you doing? Bill, Bill is doing this. Yeah. What, what does that mean? No. 
six, six. six. Oh, Boom. Right, 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 we're, right. we're coming to it. And that, folks, it all goes together. The Word of God is true. It is tomorrow's headlines. You cannot get away from it. You cannot escape it. I am going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior at the Bema Seat. The rest of you yahoos are going to stand before him that do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe these deceivers because they have itching ears and you want to be told how good you are. You're going to stand before God at the great white throne judgment. Well, I found out this only lasts for an hour. It Is that enough? Off. We better quit right there. Yeah, <laughs> because we're already, we've already gone to the next chapter. So anyway, God bless you folks. Thank you for listening. Uh, Connie mentioned a while ago about some sort of telling uh, the salvation. The salvation is of the Word of God. If the Lord teaches you from these lessons, you feel a need, uh, you feel the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit upon your lives. If you're not a child of God, well, tell them what to do. Call upon the name of the Lord from a sincere heart and realize that you are a sinner and you need a Savior. And Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is the Savior. It has to be from a sincere heart, a humble heart. If, he, if you're one of his children already from the foundation of the world, he'll show you the way. He'll show you what to do. And if you, this ministry is helping you in any way, we're going to continue on. We've already had people tell us that, yes, please continue. Don't stop. Don't stop. Well, we're going to continue right on because, folks, this is the Word of God, and I enjoy sharing it with you. And whatever comments you put out there, that's your business. If they're positive, happy faces, smileys, whatever they do, Fine, uh, but we're going to continue in what the Word of God says. So thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.